People say we have a population crisis, and we do. But it's not us, it's them. Farm animals are now increasing in number about twice as fast as human beings. 70% of the birds on Earth by weight are chickens, turkeys and farmed ducks. And while livestock are booming, wildlife is collapsing. Here in Britain, half our total land area, yes, half the entire land surface is given over to livestock grazing. Worldwide, 28% of the Earth's surface is devoted to it. And what do we get in return? Well, from animals fed on grass alone, we get, what, half our total protein? Nope. Quarter? Nope. One percent. Growing protein in the form of cows releases almost 200 times as much greenhouse gases than growing the same amount of protein in nuts. The 75 billion farm animals we kill for food every year cause more climate breakdown than all our planes, trains, trucks, cars and ships put together. The extreme climate events of the past few years, the heat dome over North America, which cooked the fruit on the trees and roasted the shellfish on the rocks, the wildfires in California and Australia, the great heat waves in the Arctic and Antarctica, the floods in Europe, in China, in South Africa. These look to me like the flickering of the Earth's systems. The world could be about to flip out of its current stable state the state which is perfectly suited to the flourishing of life and into a different one altogether. Would this new state be habitable for the living creatures on Earth today, including most humans? Unlikely. I'm 59, and unless we change the way we eat, I think it will happen in my lifetime. But I think there is a way in which we can feed the 10 billion people who will be on Earth in 2050 and prevent this apocalypse. Ready for it? Stop farming animals. Just stop. Brilliant, eh? The end. Um, no, hang on a moment. Let me explain. Everything humans have eaten to date has come from plants capturing the sun's energy through photosynthesis. And we either eat the plants directly or we consume the animals and fungi that themselves eat the plants. But now, in Helsinki, Finland, scientists are brewing up an entirely different kind of food. Inside these tanks, protein is being produced by bacteria. The only inputs are water, carbon from the air, a sprinkling of nutrients, and electricity to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. And the only waste product is water. I was the first person outside the Helsinki team to eat a pancake made from it. And the shocking truth is that it tasted just like a pancake. Humanity's favorite meat is a generic white protein. These bacteria can produce an almost identical generic white protein without the breeding and feeding and slaughtering of 66 billion birds a year. You can have something which tastes very much like chicken without involving the chickens. In fact, these bacteria can be selected or gene edited to produce any of the proteins and fats we get from eating animal products. The same molecules, just made a different way. And we wouldn't have the added heart disease and food poisoning and occasional pandemics that we get as a special bonus from eating animals. Growing protein this way uses 1,700 times less land than the second most efficient way of doing it, which is growing soya. And it uses 138,000 times less land than producing beef. What this means is that we can produce all the protein required by 10 billion people in an area the size of Greater London. And that would enable us to return three quarters of the world's farmland to nature. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, it's a big deal to end animal farming, and I expect to get no end of abuse for making this film. We all cling to the warm and comforting beliefs with which we're raised, the bucolic images of livestock farms that are imprinted on our minds by children's books when we're very young. So it's hardly surprising that our loyalties are to the aesthetics, not the evidence. I don't expect to see much pastoral poetry written about microbes growing in a vat. But truth is seldom beauty, and beauty is seldom truth.